My biggest fear would be when the first comes and I don't get the rent. I found that my tenant had dumped concrete down my toilet. Can you believe Fair Housing fined me $5,000 for that? How do you onboard your tenants? What do you do? I don't even know if I do it right. If you're a landlord, don't just rent, rent perfect. The Rent Perfect Podcast with property expert and private investigator, David Pickron. Well, hello. We're glad you joined us today on the Rent Perfect Podcast. Scott, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good. My awesome sidekick here. Thank you so much. Hey, I'm I'm uh I'm actually really excited about today's topic. Me too. I uh do you even know what it is? I mean, you come on board. Yeah, no, no, just... I know. We we pre game this. Oh, I know the topic. Come on. <laughs> we'll we'll see how good you are at this. But uh no, one thing is is we don't really pre game a lot of stuff. We sit down and we kinda talk about uh certain topics. Yeah. We think that uh the best comes out when we just talk. So sometimes yeah. you'll see me ask Scott a question. He'll be like, what in the world are you looking for? But <laughs> anyways, um, let's, let's, let's get on with this. Uh, I do want to start and ask you a question. Sure. What are some of the lessons that you've taught your kids as they've grown up? What's important to you as a dad? Uh, I mean, as a dad, I've got, I've got four kids. And I mean, number, w- number one lesson in my house was we teach kindness. We teach loving each other. And uh, at like every good dad, we teach hard work. Well, let me go back to the kindness and loving. You did a mm-hmm. very good job at Thanks. that because your kids They're are great fantastic kids. kids. You should have taught me this many, many years ago. <laughs> okay. No, my kids are great too. I'm just yeah, kidding. They are. But hard work. Yeah. What's so important about hard work? Well, I mean, hard work is, uh, as we've been taught, right? And sometimes inaccurately we're taught things, but hard work, we equate that with success. We do. So if I work 20 hours a day, I'm going to be more successful than if I work 10. Right. Right. Yeah. Because we think if you stay in your bed all day long, it's kind of hard to find success if you can't even yeah. get out of your bed. Right. And my, my kids hate this because, I mean, for a while, this was my mantra. We do hard things. Yeah. We do hard things. I mean, that's, that's just life. We do hard things. We do. But what would you say if I said, I believe that the least amount of time you spend on your properties is healthy? Would, they, would that be counterintuitive to that? It's a little or? counterintuitive, yeah. Okay, well, I want you to hang in on there in this podcast because I want to explain exactly what I'm talking about because by the time I'm done, it's going to totally make sense. Um, let me start out just kind of playing with the brain a little bit. I've been around a long time, and I, I know myself really well, but have you ever been in a situation where you just don't want to do something and, and that if someone's making you do it, you're going to do everything you can to get done with it as quickly as possible, whether right. it's clean your room, whatever it is, just my wife says, hey, go clean the bathroom. I don't know. I'm spending an hour in there, like mm-hmm. spit shining the place. I'm like <laughs> toilet, toilet, top, top. Yep, okay, yep. honey. Yeah. <laughs> but have you ever rushed through something that you didn't really do that great because your brain was just like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Let me, let me give you a recent example. Okay. okay. Uh, if you're not watching this, I got a big bandage on my face. This last week, I had some skin cancer removed, and I went into the di- I went into the dermatologist first. You know, first uh, trip of the year, and I walked up to the counter, and I got the uh, oh, it's a new year. Okay. Happy we need, year. yeah, well, we need your driver's <laughs> license and your insurance card. Because that changed. No, and, I, and I said, <laughs> nothing's changed. And they're like, we understand, but we still need to get the information. Because you burned the last copy? I don't think so. Right. And, right. and after that, they gave me that infamous clipboard with the newly sanitized pen and uh, and said, hey, we're also going to need you to update all your forms and stuff. Oh, so you got the packet. You got I got the, the packet. medical packet. I got the medical packet. Oh, and, you know, there's nothing I love more than when I don't feel well to sit in a room with a bunch of sick people in a really crappy chair listening to 80s Yacht Rock filling out forms. That's my favorite thing. I am completely and totally feeling <laughs> you right now because <laughs> I can't stand this. This is such a great example. Yes, yeah. Right. So, you know, and, and I start out with patient name. I, I put it in, right? And then patient age, patient address, phone number, social, social security right. number, insurance number. You just took my card and copied it. Can you do the hard work there? So I put my, I'd get my wallet back out, get my insurance card back out, put the number down. Okay. Put it all away, button it up, fill out the form, flip the page. First name. Wow. Okay. Fill out, go through the process again, all the header right. information. Right. Uh, you know, and then they ask me questions about things that I don't feel are relevant. I'm here to look at something on my face and 
Why do you care if I had glaucoma? Right. Or if I had a surgery 15 years ago? Or if I broke a and, bone? And who did it on what dates? Yeah. What was the results? I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean <laughs> this is like stuff. My brain, my calories are burning, and I'm just like... I hate every part about this. Check, 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 check. I've never had. I've never been sick. I've never had any of these things. I may have had them all. I don't know. But right. I'm just like I'm. I want to get through it no. so badly. No, no. Yeah, I no. want to get through it so no. badly right. that I just I'm just burning through it. Sign my name. Flip it over. Oh, HIPAA release. Well, my first name again. Right. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you start wondering why do I go to the you know and and the the bad thing is that most of the time I've already pre filled this out online digitally. So it's already in your system. You know who I am when I get there. You have last year's copy, maybe. Yeah. Maybe so anyway, this right. is like, for me, this is a, a, a calorie burner, a brain right. cramp that I just don't look forward to ever. So somehow my handwriting just gets so fast and terrible. I'm surprised they can even read these yeah, forms. It's doctor I'm handwriting just, by the time you're done. And, and I'm getting in this mindset of just nitpicking everything. Yeah. And I'm just not happy. And now I'm going to go in and see a doctor. And I'm supposed to be like, hey, how are you? Yeah. You know, I just, it makes, it, it starts the whole appointment for me just mm-hmm. off on the wrong stuff. Yeah. Right. That is a fantastic example. Now, one of the times that I felt this in my life, young in my career, was I had bought a, be- a few homes for me. You ever go through closing a title and yeah. they give you the, the stack? How, how much yeah. of that do you read, right? Uh, none. You just... In, in fact, the lady's yeah. like, this is about um, the radon gas in the air. And she, she's like giving you like the summary yeah. of like the form. You're just like, signs. Yeah. Signs, yeah, signs, yeah signs. Next one. Next, next. Right. But I had some experience, um, you know, buying homes for myself in my 20s. But when I very first got into this investment world, I actually bought two properties. So okay. my very first purchase of investment properties were two properties. And I closed on those properties, and I remember sitting on the, the front driveway looking at it, pr- really proud that I bought two, two of my first invest- big-time investor, yeah. right? The start the of next, a huge yeah. career. Empire. Right? Oh, this yeah, empire. this is the start of it. <laughs> and I thought to myself, now what? Okay, I bought it. I knew how to buy homes before. I had mm-hmm. some experience, but, but this home is making me no money sitting here vacant. And I soon learned that I had to go from this investor role into this property management landlord housing provider role. And to be honest with you, I didn't like that role back in the day. And the reason I didn't like that role is because the process to onboard somebody can get very tedious. And you can find yourself rushing through it, not filling out things correctly. You're brained in that doctor's office going, I do not like yeah. this process. <laughs> Just give me the money. Let me give you the keys yeah. and let me let, let's let you move in. And let's be done with this. And there's a lot of mistakes made by landlords when they don't like a process. And I was one of them who didn't like a process. And so I found that, you know, when I couldn't read some of an application, I didn't call and double check. I didn't get the ID at the same time and double check the ID. I just figured everybody always told me the truth. And it Mm -hmm. took me a while over my career to realize where you're making mistakes is because you were too lazy to double check yep. what you did. And so the thing I love about you is that when you come up, when you come up against something like this, when you bump up against it, you go, how do I make this better? How do I make this more efficient? And you go do it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, think how easy it is for that doctor's office just to subscribe to some medical database where you could have all that in there and then just share your data with them. Say, yeah. um, Hey, can you give me an update share? Yeah. It's all updated share. Somehow they print out the forms. It goes into their system. Yeah. That seems like it would be, you know, 2022. It would seem like that's pretty feasible. Yeah, but very, I wanted very, to yeah. come over in, you know, in the early 2000s, and I wanted to do this with the onboarding process because it was so painful for me. I knew I wanted to be an investor. Mm-hmm. You know, I knew I wanted this. I wanted this to be my career, but I couldn't keep failing at it or doing it not very well and be successful yeah. at it. So I coined the successful lazy landlord, and I went to work to get technology to take care of things that were causing me anxiety, mm-hmm. okay? And I really figured three three major areas out that we had to figure out to get our brain to like to do so we do it right. Because when we didn't like to do it, we did it wrong. Yeah, these are calorie efficient things where you're not, I mean. 100%. Yeah. These, these aren't survival, these are thrive mechanisms. I love it. Here's what I knew. I knew that, that the more information I received on somebody's past helped me make the best decision on renting to them for the future. I would ask myself two questions. Will I get my rent and will these people take care of my property? Okay. 
So I knew in order to ask, answer those two questions in the best way possible, I needed to look at the past to see how did they take care of the rent? How did they pay the rent in the past mm -hmm. to predict how they're going to pay rent in the future? And how do they take care of the properties in the past to see how they're going to take care yeah. of my property? So I knew that that criminal credit eviction background check was critical in this game. This was not a, a place to rush through. Mm -hmm. But in the old days to get this, it was a tedious process. So I used to have a paper application. I would meet you at the property, show you the property. If you said, I'll take it right here and now, that was the best. If you said, let me go home and think about it, and then you called me three hours later and said, oh, we've decided we're going to take it. Now I've got to meet you, scan this, fax it, email it, however I'm going to get this to you, i got to get this application to you. You've got to fill it out. You've got to sign it. You've got to give it back to me either in person, email, scan, fax. Then I take this application, which someone didn't want to fill out, by the way, of all yeah, the much like those doc, much like information, those doctor forms, and yeah. I'm reading through, <laughs> like, handwriting I can't even understand. Is that an I, an L? Is that? Mm -hmm. And those, that information is pretty dang critical at this point to get your right spelling, your right date of birth, and your right social, so I get the right information on you. Correct? Right, you know? yeah. So I'm looking at this application, and I'm reading all this stuff, and then I go and I log into a system, and I start retyping everything you put on that application. What a waste of time. Yeah. Right? That's the process that I was like, uh, this has got to change. So why not send them an email invite with a link? They fill out an online application, and that process is right into the criminal credit eviction background. Why do I yeah. even have to touch it? They get to do the data entry that you used to have to laboriously go through. Right. Yeah. And I'm not even passing an application back around now. So now when someone says, hey, we're going to think about it, and two hours later they call me, I put in their telephone number or their email address. I send it to them online. I go about my business. Mm -hmm. They're the ones busy uploading their IDs, uploading their paycheck stubs, giving me all the information, filling out the application. And when they push submit, automatically goes and gets me the credit criminal and eviction background. The next thing I see is the application with all the supporting documents that I need to start making a decision. Now, at Rent Perfect, we have private investigators that take four to six hours after this process just to double check everything and go into jur court jurisdictions that aren't available to us in instantly. instantly yeah. So there is a little four to six hour window, but that is such a valuable window where you have your very own private investigator working for you on your behalf to protect right. you. Mm -hmm. You want to wait for that four to six hours, but you get all this information right away. So think of the, just the time alone. I used to hand this application off, used to fill it out, used to give it to me, I used to input it. That took days, days. Mm -hmm. Because when you gave me back the application, it doesn't mean I was just sitting here waiting for it. I had nothing else to do today. I had to wait for a time where I got done with a meeting or I got yeah. done with, you know. And It's I, probably 9 o'clock at night. And I, I yeah, and I put it that. in and then, you know, imagine now I can onboard somebody in hours. Within hours, I can send you an invite, you fill it out, I get my information back, and I can decide these are the people that are going to be my business partners into my rental properties yeah. for the next, you know, two, three, four, five right. years. Love it, yeah. Now, the process back in the day was when I found someone I liked, now I went out and I went to my Word document and I changed the name. I had to save the original <clears throat> one because that was someone else's lease, and then right. I copied it, and then I better make sure I changed the name I changed address, the address, term, I changed yeah. the terms, right. and then the, I got the rent amount right, right. and, <laughs> you know, and all the things, and I'm sitting there fighting with this document, and then I have to save it to make sure I have two copies if it didn't root his lease, now I got his lease. Um, that was taxing for me. That was that, that, that doctor's moment, like, mm -hmm. oh, I got to do a lease tonight. Um, and I would procrastinate it, and I wasn't excited about it. Yeah, rather than celebrating my, my, my property is getting to be occupied, yeah. I'm going to collect rent. Perfect. So uh, now... Yeah. Now I get back all this information, whether I'm at lunch or whether where I'm at, I look at it, I, I look at it, I review it, and I'm saying, hey, this could be the good person. And now I go and I go to this little wizard that just says, when does your term start date? What is the rent amount? Was there any special agreements you guys made? You know, and a few other things it asks you. Um, but it's like four, four or five steps. I go through this, boom, 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 push preview, send off for signature. Mm -hmm. Once again, I'm having a lease signed sometimes the same day they apply. Now, most people would say, well, that's crazy. You got to wait and you got to listen. When you're a successful lazy landlord and you have processes working this fast for you, you're not spending a whole lot of time, yet you're doing it the right way. So I could show 
apply and sign a lease with my tenant all in one day. All in one day. And, but, but do it right, yeah. right? Because anybody yeah. can do that the wrong sure. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're doing it the, the right, right way, way, making great decisions. Um, and the third piece is the, the money part of it. I mean, that's why we're in here in this business. And it's, it's kind of fun because I can send you your lease and I can send you a request for your security deposit at the same time. So I can say, here's your lease, sign your lease, send me 2000 to hold it. Or mm-hmm. I can say, we're a go on the first, send me security deposit and your rent. And they can go ahead and input it in there and, and have it taken from their bank account right into your bank account. No more meeting people for a check, right? No one really wants to pay that by credit card because 3% fees yeah. are too high. You're not checking your, el- your mailbox right. every day. Man, You're not, I yeah. mean, <laughs> all of a sudden now I'm like, okay, sent away a lease. I got it back. I'll sign. Looks good. Now all of a sudden the money's in my account. The only thing I have to do now is give them access into the property, you know? Yeah. And then I set that that rent pay up for a monthly, um, you know, for their monthly rent, and it just automatically comes out of their bank account with their permission sure. every month. And I also love that this thing tracks the payment. So it'll say, in five days your rent is due, in four days your rent is due, in three days your rent is due, today your rent is due. Today your rent is late with a $25 late payment. Tomorrow it will be 50. I mean, it just nags them for me. So there is no way I could ever hear a, a tenant say to me, oh, I just, I lost track of time. That my, I mean, yeah. they're like, your, your system's probably a little bit of annoying, but I want to be their focus at the end of the month as we get into the yeah. new rental period. Right. I want to be on their mind. Well, and, and you want to be back to it successful and lazy at the same time. You're like, right. hey, I just, I, I've set this and, and I don't want to have to think about it again. Yeah. And here was where I was super lazy. If I got a payment, say, after their little grace period that I have, so I got a payment on the 5th and they owed me an extra $50 in late fees, but they gave me the check without the $50, then I would have to say, is it worth $50 for me to give back this check? Say, hey, you owe me another $50. Right. Or was it just lazy and easy of me just to say, okay, I'm just going to waive it and whatever. You know, and how much of those $50 fees did I lose? But then how much did I teach my tenants to pay on the fifth yeah. instead of the first and it was okay? Yeah, you've conditioned them that oh, he didn't care yeah. last month, so he won't care this month. So this rent pay actually just, you know, sets the tone and it lets them know what mm-hmm. they've agreed to in the lease. And it just kind of monitors that for me. Yeah. And I haven't had one late pay in years using this system. Which is incredible. So I get the yeah. right background checks. I have the right processes in place that make it easy to, to communicate with my tenant back and forth, whether it's application, lease, you know, mm-hmm. the move in we won't talk about today, but there's a whole move in, move out checklist that they do online, take pictures, store pictures, and have it all on your phone. And in the end, I get my rent and I do all of this. Guy, Here's a beautiful thing. Here's, here's, here's when you know you're a successful lazy landlord, when you ditch the manila folder. Like manila sure. folder. Yep gone everything is on my phone when i need it access to it you know and i don't need to go to my lease very often i mean the yeah. most time i go to my lease is when someone's moving out i'm like how much deposit did they give right, me right. two three four or five years ago yeah. you know i don't go to that lease very often but i have it with me all the time secured stored right at my fingertips so you can ask yourself do you love to sit in the doctor's office and fill out those forms do you love to be a landlord and go through these paper forms in this manila. Because you're old school. Good luck. I hope mm-hmm. you like it. I don't like that yeah. paperwork. I don't do it well. Yeah. So if you are like me, jump to Rent Perfect, jump on the rent pay system, and use this process because you'll use less calories. You'll spend less time on your properties. That's what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Right. Spending less time on your properties makes you healthier. Having anxiety in your head and and not wanting to do something and and doing it halfway, that's not healthy to you in the future. You will only have evictions and headaches when you do things halfway. Mm -hmm. So spend less time, let technology work for you, use the Rent Perfect system, and you will find health and happiness and success as a landlord. And isn't that what we all want? That's That's what I want. I think every landlord wants that. That's what we want. Well, I appreciate the uh, the doctor story that yeah. set this podcast up perfectly. <laughs> I don't know how you pulled that out of a rabbit's hat, I'm telling you. But, man, you nailed that one. But uh, we appreciate you always, Scotty. Appreciate all your yeah. input. And until next time, continue to rent perfect.